Hello, welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and today we're going to create a sweet layout. So as you know, on July 1st, our brand new catalog launched. So we have Cape Cod, which you see here with these gorgeous blues and greens and aqua colors. I have a couple photos in case I decide to do a layout. There's some browns and some yellow not a lot of blue but there is some sapphire in there there is this cute wood grain in the cape cod the cute blue stripe um some of the stickers might go maybe some of the browns but for the most part i don't feel like the stickers in that sticker sheet will go with that particular photo uh set and so we also have cozy up which is another brand new line in our brand new catalog I love, love, love Cape Cod. I love, love, love Cozy Up, and I am a fall girl. I absolutely love fall. I am not quite ready for it yet. I do have big plans for Cape Cod. There are some of the browns that would work well in here, um, and maybe there's a few of those browns because of my brown hair or uh, some of those things that may end up being able to jive together. Next, we have our season mix-ins, and there are some interesting tidbits in here that I think would be great. Of course, there's that yellow. There's sapphire, just like in Avery Jean's shirt and in her ribbon in her hair um, I do love both sides of the yellow of the season mix-ins I maybe could even make that toffee pattern work so right now I'm just processing all of the new papers that we have to work with thinking about whether I want to do a layout with these photos or if I would like to do cards I do know 100% that I'm using the July stamp of the month which is called the bees knee and the end result and the end decision is I decide to create this adorable sweet layout with that stamp of the month and a combination of the papers that we just looked at. We do some stenciling, we do some stamping, and I wanted to tell the story of the little yellow jacket. And I'll tell you a little more about that here in just a bit. But when I'm getting ready to create with a stamp of the month, I like to actually do what I call bonding with the stamp. I like to pull out scraps and different pieces within the stamp set. So I see that it has some hexagons, it has some honeycombs, it has some cute sayings, it has these larger stamps, the really large floral bee, which is gorgeous, and then it has a larger honeycomb that also has the floral. I like to season my stamp by just practicing over and over on some scraps paper and then it gives me a little bit more of an idea of where I see that stamp being used if I want to use it on cards or if I want to use it on a layout now even though I know that um, if I do do a layout I probably won't use both of the bees or both of the honeycombs but I really like to get these practices in get a feel for the stamp and if there's something that moves me or something that I really uh, want to do with it, it will spark that idea. And then I also can season the stamp and get the stamp so that it stamps nice and dark. So this is not bad at all. I love the floral, uh, the way that it stamped the floral, but I'm going to come back in with a little bit of True Black Tri-Blend marker and just darken up that entry to the hive just a little bit and maybe a little bit on the B body. Now when I work with the stamp of the month it's because I create lots of workshops and I have lots of customers who really enjoy the stamp of the month program. You can get a free stamp of the month when you're a VIP when you place an order of $50 or more and the stamp of the month like the stamp of the month that you see here is normally $18.95 so you get it for free as a VIP if you place an order in that month for $50. And if you're a non-VIP, when you hit that $50 mark, you can get it for $5. So there are so many people. This Stamp of the Month program has been going on for a long, long time. And there's so many of the people that take advantage of it that I make Stamp of the Month kits 
for my customers so that they'll get that stamp out and use it. So now looking at this stamp, I think I've decided on the layout with, uh, this is Avery Jean, one of my granddaughters, and she is wearing the yellow jacket. And this is Ramsey Kate, her sister who is wearing the jacket. And then I also have a layout with Hattie Elaine, who is wearing the jacket. So it's all about the cute hand-me-downs and them saying hello to the world in their cute little yellow jacket that each sister has worn. I have a layout that I've already done of Ramsey Kate. I have a layout that I've already done I believe of Hattie Elaine so now I want to do the one with Avery Jean and there's some browns in my hair and in the door there's some oranges in my jacket there's the blue and the sapphire in Avery Jean's bow and in her shirt and so when I create stamp of the month bonus kits I create about 75 kits and so makers have access to bulk papers where you get more of one style of paper so this this is the Cape Cod bulk. It has this great stripe where the blues would be taken care of in terms of the blues in Avery's um, shirt and in her bow. There's this brown bulk that is the cozy up bulk and it has the leaf pattern on the back. Now I love, love, love that leaf pattern, but I'm not so much thinking about leaves with the bees or even ready for leaves quite yet, but I definitely know I will use that probably next month and create something gorgeous with it. So now we also have these season mix-ins and I love that sapphire paper. There's also this orange paper that comes with cozy up that has some words on it and then these other three patterns underneath the orange are from our season mix-ins so all of those are possibilities there's only one hitch in my giddy up <laughs> that is if I use season mix-ins you only get one sheet each of those season mix-ins and so if I use a very big piece and I have to multiply that by 75 kits it could get so spendy so I have to really design carefully using the bulk or using um, smaller bits of the papers that I have less of to really make my kits cost effective so I love the featured artwork and one of the things that I do at the beginning of every catalog cycle is I look at the featured artwork for each collection and I get ideas so here you have some browns in here you have a background sheet which I could probably do some honeycomb um, stamping with some honeycombs in the background instead of using a large background paper on each of 75 kits I could really accentuate the stamp and do stamping I love the featured artwork for cozy up with the larger squares again Cozy Up has that out that background around the outer edge. I could see doing some stenciling with some honeycombs um, because of the bee stamp. I could see doing some stamping with some of those honeycombs or those florals. And then I kind of love both of these layouts. So I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go, but I do see if I did use the Cozy Up, I might be able to use a combination of the Cape Cod and the Cozy Up bulks, the stripe and the brown, and maybe use a solid in between. Now here's a layout with Ramsey Kate. I told you that I did layouts with the other granddaughters with the little yellow jacket. So now I'm going to launch into the layout for the little yellow jacket. Now I have not decided which layout I'm going to use. However, I know that both of those layouts have plenty of space around the edges and I 100% am going to do some stenciling or some stamping around the outer edge whether I do the Cape Cod layout or whether I do the cozy up layout I'm going to take an 11 by 11 white daisy piece of paper and I want to do some inking and some stenciling on that white paper now I've cut some some honeycombs off of the Cricut but we also have this great honeycomb stencil that comes out of the card front stencil pack but it's sold out and I love it so much because it has little dainty tiny honeycombs and it makes the perfect background so when you look at the ones that I cut on the Cricut they're much 
larger. Now I have a use for these because I can integrate those into my layout, but what I love the most is these itty bitty dainty little honeycombs for stenciling. So I did a little bit of welding and I created that little honeycomb stencil so that it was the size of our stencil that has sold out. And there is a little bit of a trick to that because a larger one just shrunk down makes it a little bit hard to work with. So I did some welding and I'm including that video here for you to see how to create those on your own and create those great stencils. But this design space file and every um, image that we that I've cut and used on this layout today will be in the de design space file in the description of this video and it's free. So go ahead and click on that. But I'm also going to show you how to make those as well. So now I have a little bit of honey butter ink and a little bit of sun dance ink and my blending brushes and the very first thing that I always do when I'm planning a layout especially if there's stenciling on it or if there is background stamping on it not so much if it was personally for myself I might go for it if it was personally for myself I might just go right on my base page but since I'm designing my stamp of the month kit and I have to make 75 customers happy with this kit I like to do some experimenting so I'm using my um, stencil my honeycomb stencil and I did a little bit of honey butter and then I did a little bit of Sundance um, uh, and I used both so I used the um, the Cricut stencil that I made on the Cricut and they and the um, stencil from the stencil pack in honey butter now I'm going to repeat that with the stencil that I made on the Cricut in Sundance and then I'm going to repeat that again with the stencil from the stencil pack and one of the reasons I'm doing it with both of those stencils is that I can show you that both of them look equally beautiful and so even though you're making that stencil on the Cricut it makes beautiful patterns but I of course prefer our made stencils because they last and last and last and practically last forever. They're wipeable, they're bendable, they're durable. Um, but a Cricut stencil is great, but it is a temporary fix. So you can use the Cricut stencil on cardstock a couple of times and then you wouldn't be able to use it again. Um, you'd have to cut another one. And uh, depending on the kind of a cutter you have, you could maybe even cut acetate or cut something that's a little more sturdy. So looking at the colors in my photos, I really love both of them, but I think maybe I might like to come over the Sundance and rub in a little bit of honey butter. On the other one, I'm going to rub a little bit of Sundance over, over the honey butter. So honey butter over Sundance or Sundance over honey butter. And I know what you're thinking, like who cares, right? But I truly do want to get the color right when it comes to the pattern papers that I choose, especially because I'm using a large mix of pattern papers from a variety of sources whether it be the season mix-ins or the Cape Cod or the cozy up and the reason I'm mixing the papers is so that I don't have to use so much of any one paper and that would break the bank right so I'm looking at both of these layouts and again I know that I can go ahead I've chosen my color now I really love the Sundance with honey butter rubbed over it I'm going to use my um, my stencil from the stencil pack but do know that your stencil that I've taught you in the video that's linked in this description that I taught you how to make and that I also included in the design space that's free in the description will work just fine so I think that I'd like to run some of that stencil larger in the corner and taper it off down the bottom and then maybe go up the left side a little bit or start at the upper left and then maybe do a little bit in the middle right to create a visual triangle as you know and close to my heart we like to create visual triangles with different elements whether it be stamping elements or inked elements or stickers or die cuts 
or bling, we, t- we typically use the rule of three and um, a visual triangle. So now I'm just making a little bit of a larger pattern in this corner, knowing that much of that is going to be covered up, but it's going to show whether I use the Cape Cod layout um, as my inspiration or whether I use the um, Cozy Up layout as my inspiration. It's going to peek through. And honestly, I'll, I already know the outcome and I don't even know where my layout came from because it didn't end up looking like either of my inspiration layouts and I'm laughing because I tell customers all the time grab something and just start because it will lead you in places that you never imagined it's only the starting that is the hardest once you choose something and you get started it really takes on a mind of its own and then your creative spirit comes through and people will say well I can't do what you do and I'm saying that is not true when you pull something out and once you get started it just will flow and you may not end up with anything that looks like what you started with but that is the glorious beauty of creating and that to me is what really fills up my soul when I'm having a down day or a down week or a down month and I start creating it totally fills my cup up. So as you can see, I'm coming back in with the honey butter. So I went over it with Sundance and I did the stenciling with Sundance and I love it. It's gorgeous and it's so glowing. It's going to be perfect. Now I can go upward a little bit and have a little bit of a larger on that left corner and then have um, a little bit over to the right too. I don't want to overpower everything with it, but I do feel that I can do this inking and some stamping techniques and doing this groundwork on the base is going to make it just glow. It's going to make it gorgeous and and I think we're going to be so, so happy with it. So I'm just going to repeat a little bit, a couple more places. Um, I'm going to... Um, Go back in when I get done with the Sundance, with I get when I get done with the honeycomb, and I'm going to go back in. And what's really neat about whether you're using your Cricut stencil or whether you're uh, using our card front stencil is they're so easy to line up. So you just line up the little hexagons inside, and it's great. It totally works great. So now I'm going to go back in and give it a glow with the honey butter. And as always with our blending brushes. You can go darker and lighter. You can really hold your hand back a little bit and barely rub. Um, and sometimes I use my wrist to do that or the palm of my hand and I barely rub. And then sometimes I really give it a good rub. Like if I really want it to be deeper or richer. And I'm just loving how this is coming out. It's just a gorgeous technique. I love it. So now I'm going to do a little bit more over on the right. And I don't want to do too too much. I do know whatever I do, whether it's the Cape Cod inspiration or um, the Cozy Up inspiration, um, at this point in the video, I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know that it's going to peek through and no matter what, working around the edges like this is going to make it peek through. Now, I could have done this after my pieces were in place and I do that lots and lots of times, but I also love prepping a page first and just being able to go. Um, and also it sort of helps you arrange your pieces sometimes too. It's kind of six to one, half dozen to the other that sometimes it really feels right to do it the opposite and sometimes it really feels right to do it this way. So yay, uh, bringing that back in, I do think I want to bring in a little shimmer brush splatter. So the burning question is, do I use black or do I use sapphire? So there's black inking on some of the pieces that I do feel that I'll be using, but there's quite a bit of sapphire in my photo and I do envision 
mounting this on a sapphire background. Now, um, Cape Cod has some all different colors of blue in it. Um, and, uh, and my photo also has some blue in it as well. So now I'm showing you when you have a brand new shimmer brush, how you pop that yellow ring out and how you don't want to unscrew the lid once you pop that ring out. You want to pull it straight off. If it's a brand new shimmer brush, you're gonna shake it up a little bit. And then there's two little rough spots on the shimmer brush that you can squeeze together and um, again I pull back in my scraps and my practice because I love to practice especially when I know that 75 people are counting on me to like their stamp of the month kit if it was a layout just for myself I might go ahead and splatter that shimmer brush and let the chips fall where they may but I'm practicing first so I put the black on and yes you are correct shimmer brushes can get messy sometimes I'll do a shimmer brush in like a cardboard box um, but this all-purpose mat is a dream come true it just wipes and I love just using that I I tease in every single video that you can bury me with my all-purpose mat and my Versa mat so looking at both of them they look about the same until it begins to dry once it begins to dry that sapphire takes on a really rich hue of blue so I am gonna go with a sapphire that is the beauty I can make my own executive decision I'm going with the sapphire shimmer brush so now that I've made that decision I'm going to come back in squeeze a little puddle off onto my all-purpose mat and then I'm going to do the magic and sprinkle with a little tap 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 just a little tap just enough sometimes I like to go heavier sometimes I like to go lighter but thinking of bees and the beehive and the honeycomb I just feel like a little bit of splatter of that sapphire is going to add such a great tone to that. Yay, I'm happy. Now, let's see what else can we do. A little more bonding with my stamp set. I don't like to go directly onto a background page until I've tried a stamp for the very first time myself. So again, on my practice paper, I'm going to pull off a variety of the stamps on the stamp set and I'm going to um, use them with a little sapphire. Fire. I'm going to use them with a little black and I'm going to see how I feel. Um, how does it make me feel when I see that? Now, one of my goals with the stamp of the month is my customers who earn the stamp of the month uh, bonus kit for free. Um, I'll link in the description how you can do that. Um, it'll take you right to my blog that'll tell you how you can earn my free stamp of the month bonus kits. But my customers who earn them, one of the primary reasons that I do the stamp of the month bonus kit is how many times do we get a stamp because we love it so much or we earn it for free and we never open it we never use it and so I designed these kits so they will open up their stamp of the month I give them all the pieces that they need they just have to finish it using their stamp of the month and then I give them all the tools and the guide and the design space links and any of those things to create Create more if they want to create more. So they get a pre cut kit um, from me and then. Um, they can just put that pre-kit cut together and add their stamp to it, but they can make as many as they want because they get the design space link and the pattern and the guide and the instruction. So again, I'm just experimenting here. Um, there's these little tiny hexagon dots. There's solid hexagons. There's um, hexagons with an open center. There's a cluster of hexagons. There's little flowers. Uh, there's little speckles and what I call foofs. And I I love them a lot, but I think what I love the most is that little round cluster of hexagons. I can see me putting a couple of those in each one of the areas where I have rubbed the ink and done the splattering. Not a lot, I think less is more, but just to add a little bit different texture and dimension and another color. So I do believe I decide on sapphire. And so I'm just experimenting now with the little diamond foofs, some of the little teeny foofs, and just seeing how they look. 
and it really helps. And one of my goals in my Stamp of the Month kit is to use as many stamps that are in that stamp set as possible. Um, in the same way, when I create my workshops with every single line, I try to use up as much of that kit as possible so that when you get to the end of it, you are done with it, that you don't have a lot of leftover. I try to stretch those workshops from six pages to 12 pages. Uh, some of my workshops have 12, some of them have 10, and I use the same philosophy with the stamp of the month. I try to find creative ways to use that stamp of the month and to use almost every single stamp in the stamp set in some way, shape, or form. And it's kind of become a mission, <laughs> a little challenge for myself or a little mission, and I love doing that. So here I'm just adding that cluster of uh, little um, honeycomb, the little hust cluster of honeycomb. Some of them I'm taking off the page, which I like, um, and some of them I'm putting them back to back. They link up together really well. They fit together. So if you wanted to make a larger cluster of those together, that would be super cute as well. Now I'm going to go with this little one that I sort of call foofs that you can just sort of stamp all over. And this is the little diamond shaped speckles that also reminds me of splatters. Now I might want a few of these, but I don't want much because I already have splatters with the shimmer brush. So I don't wanna get so many that it's overwhelming. So I'm kind of just waiting and sort of thinking a minute and making sure that I have those in appropriate places that I think would be really subtle, but also really, really cute. And it's just taking shape. I know we haven't even gotten into the meat of the layout yet, but it is taking shape. And when you want to talk process, here's the process. This is the process that I take every single month with my stamp of the month kits. I get them out. I bond with them. I look at all the paper in the new collections um, and then I decide. So I've added a 1 8 inch frame around this photo. I do end up by the end of the video changing the photo size um, but I um, it is an odd photo size. I printed it on my um, my Epson um, photo printer but I if this was my personal layout I would use this season mix in sapphire as the background of this photo. I love it. It goes perfectly with Avery Jean's shirt and the bow in her hair, and I would use this. But now listen, if I use this on this layout and I don't use the striped bulk, the striped bulk, we get multiple pieces of paper in a pack. Okay, of the same piece of paper. On a season mix-ins pack, you get one of each of six patterns, one. So I could get three photo mats out of one of those pieces of paper in the season mix-ins. I have 75 Stamp of the Month kits to make, and each of those Stamp of the Month kits would need one of those. I would need 25 season mix-in paper packs to make my kits. <laughs> 25. So I would be in the poor house, y'all. So I couldn't do that. So I have to be really creative. So what I do in my personal scrapping, I can be a little less frugal in my personal scrapping and use a whole piece for a photo background. But I can't do that when I need to make 75. But I have an idea. I do like the sapphire in that, um, in that pattern. What about making a pattern with one of the stamps around the edge of a photo mat? So now I have to decide. I can use the bulk pretty economically. So I could put the bulk stripe behind the paper or I could use this sapphire piece and put a pattern behind it. And then I would be cutting cardstock for all of my customers. And then they would have another idea and another use for the stamp set and be able to create their own photo mats that have designs in them using their stamp. So I'm going back and forth and I'm just kind of him hawing around trying to decide. And I do believe that I decide to go with stamping of that photo mat. And then I may even actually keep 
that striped piece in there somewhere. So now I'm looking at how to color my bees and my hive. I do know that I will probably use bits and pieces of the larger honeycombs um, and use those as added interest to the page and added um, embellishing as well as just some more texture. And I'll probably snip those so that I can use those in multiple spots. But the burning question is how to color bits that need lots of color. So this will require, it won't be hard coloring. There's hardly any large spaces, but it will require coloring. So colored pencils, watercolors, maybe more inking techniques, my tri-blend markers, which I love. So I have decided that I would like to try to color the body of the bee and the main part of the hive again using those same inks and the blending brushes. It's a great way to get lots of coverage quicker than markering that whole larger space or coloring that whole larger space. Another quicker way is probably watercolor painting with your ink pads, but I've decided that I'm going to use my test run. Remember I made two of each so that I could do a practice. I'm going to do it in Sundance ink and do some rubbing, and then I'm going to do it in honey butter ink and do some rubbing, and I'm going to make an executive, executive decision because I'm the boss. <laughs> So I'm loving the top. I'm loving that rich honey butter. I really, really love that. I can always come in, come back in with some Sundance, but I really love a little bit more of the subtle honey butter. And of course, I can see that I've been accidentally mixing my ink. Sometimes I get my blending brushes mixed up. And so they look a little bit the same all of a sudden, but they are not. So now I'm going to, I've made a decision to do honey butter on the hive and I believe I'm going to go with Sundance on the bee and I love that the bee will be a darker contrasting color to the hive and that will stand out a little bit and then the orange in my jacket and the yellow in Avery Jean's shirt will go perfectly for that. So now that I've made that decision I'm going to um, move along and do that here with the um, with the masters instead of with my practice. Now, I was going to speed the video up, but because you have the option to skip chapters um, and to speed up the video as well, I'm going to leave it at regular speed, but please know that I do label my videos with chapters so you can skip ahead to certain chapters if you've gotten the information that you needed from the current chapter. So you don't have to sit and watch me rub. Now, there are people out there that absolutely love to watch other people color and to watch other people ink um, and it inspires them and it gives them ideas. So if you're one of them, hang with me. I love it. But if you are one that wants to get to the good stuff, go ahead and skip to the next chapter. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the body of the bee in Sundance. Then we're going to do some um, what I call some pro process of elimination when it comes to marketing. I have a very set system of trying out my markers when I decide what markers I'm going to use for a project. And it might seem like it takes a little bit of time, but I have never had it not be worth it. It absolutely 100% helps me decide on the colors and I don't end up coloring something, ripping it up and getting a new one and re-inking and coloring it again because of my tried and true true system of choosing marker colors. So now I have my practice. Now I have my masters that I'm going to keep separate. And now I have all of my marker colors out here. So here we go. So here we go. I am choosing my yellows. So I'm pulling out the yellows that I think might be a possibility. Um, and this is how I do it. I do pull out the marker families, at least the ones that I feel will go with everything that's either in the pattern papers that I might use or the photo that I have. I write the name of the possibility and then I make a line of the light, the medium, and the dark.
And then I go back and I look at that and I circle the one that I feel is the best out of those color families and I keep those markers out on the table. And then once I do this process of elimination for all of the color families, then I eliminate those ones that I don't feel will go well with the project so that every marker left on the table is a marker that will go with my project so I can't go wrong I typically have a systematic way of, of coloring flowers especially so I will pick out the shape of a flower and I will color that particular shape of that flower the same color every time and then color a different shaped flower a different color but I always especially toward the end when there's a lot of little ones left over I don't always stick completely to that but in general that's what I do so now I'm doing my elimination of my yellow family and I'm choosing the markers that I think go best and the others are going back in my tray in my marker storage tray and speaking of the market marker storage trays when you have a gathering um, you are reward your way eligible some makers allow their customers um, the opportunity to use some rewards your way from time to time to reward larger orders which I do and you're able to access these marker trays uh, storage trays which I absolutely love. So if you have any questions about that, yeah, just shoot me a line. So now I'm going to the orange family and some of them are like, woo, these are pretty bold. Sometimes I don't mind mixing in tiny bits of a bolder color, but that one was just a bit too much. So now I'm moving on to the next ones. And again, light, medium, and dark in the same family. So I will do this with the blue families because we have the blues in Avery shirt and in the pattern paper. I will do it with the orange families. I will do it with the yellow families. I will also, because there's a little tiny bit of green um, in my uh, my jacket as well as there's a vase in the background of all things. I wasn't obviously thinking when I snapped that photo. I was more worried about Avery Jean. But so I will probably go ahead and do um, the the green families as well. And when I get to the blues, I often have some go-to grays that have blue hues to them that are a little less like... Um, brash than some of the brighter blues when you're dealing with a lighter blue color and so I will add an ice gray is one of them vintage blue is another one vintage blue has some gray tones to it and then so does ice gray so again I'm just using this scratch paper and I'm just doing light medium and dark and if you already have a system or you don't want to watch me do my elimination process with the markers skip to the next chapter or speed up the video you totally have that option but I always find it interesting especially those people and makers that I watch that have gorgeous coloring skills me not so much I I'm not one of those that says oh I just hope I get to color today <laughs> But I have grown and acquired taste, particularly for tri-blends. Um, not, not so much. I will do color pencil with a shimmer brush. I do love to rub a shimmer brush on the tip of a colored pencil to give a uh, color. And I love those things that are really fast, like um, things that I can brush over the whole thing with a blending brush, things that I can brush over the whole thing with, uh, with one of our watercolor brushes I do love faster coloring techniques but I've developed a taste for tri blending just because it's so gorgeous and vibrant it really really does stand out and especially if you're someone like me who really needs good photos because of course I have to promote um, and I do need good photos right and so the vibrancy of a tri-blend in a photo is is really there is no other match for that so now I've gone through 
And I'm looking at all the little flowers and all the little bits inside the bee and inside the hives and that there are leaves inside those in mixed in with those flowers. So here is why I pull my greens, my green families, and I do the process of elimination with my green families as well. So you see all of those markers on the table right? But I only have certain colors out of each of those markers that are circled. So I may only have the light side of one of those markers, the dark side of one of those markers, the medium side of one of those markers. So it really isn't an overwhelming amount of colors out there. It's just that I have eliminated whether I want light, medium, or dark, or all of the above. And it helps me so much because no matter how I color now, I feel super Super confident that whatever whatever color off of that table I choose I feel really confident that I've taken an extra five minutes to really make sure that I'm choosing the right colors because I have gotten to the end of a coloring project and I've grabbed a color off of the rack that I haven't tried and I've done it on a large coloring um, stamped piece and it has looked terrible and then what do you do do you you have to re-stamp and recolor everything that you just colored right which you're not going to die but it's super annoying so you can either six to one half dozen to the other go through the process of elimination at the beginning or you can maybe take a chance and roll the dice that you're going to just luck out and get the right colors some people are just so darn good at it that they you know they get the right colors every time and they're so good at coloring and there are just certain people that i follow um certain makers especially and i'm like how did you do that it looks like art that you would see on a wall me not so much but I'm happy with my coloring I'm not going to be putting myself down and I also consider myself someone who is a learner a lifelong learner so you may not have noticed while I was yakety yakety yakking here but I got a glob of something on my page but again I do love when mistakes happen to good people <laughs> because it gives me an opportunity to show how you can fix it. So I have torn on purpose a piece of typing paper or printer paper. And the reason I've torn it is because I don't want a really straight edge when I come back in with my shimmer brush. So I'm first going to come in with the shimmer brush and try to speckle over the top of the blob. And then I'm going to actually come in with my stamping again. And if there's any heavier blobs, I'm going to come right over the top of it with a foof stamp and make it look exactly like I tried to do it and you are going to see that it looks perfect it looks exactly like I tried to do it and so don't don't despair definitely wipe your mat often and in the words of my mother God rest her soul yeah clean your hands you filthy animal <laughs> She always tells this story about my my brother and my mother was feisty, a feisty redhead. And she um, was a kind of a, you know, you do your mopping on your hands and knees. You, she was a clean person, a very neat and tidy person. If there was a dirty dish in the cupboard, you had to rewash all of them. So now I'm actually coming back into that boo-boo. After it dried, I let it dry for a few minutes and I'm coming over it with a little bit more of the honeycomb just to make it blend and it worked perfectly. So anyway, she tells a story when my older brother and I were, went over over to her girlfriend's house and her girlfriend was not the best housekeeper right so here I'm showing you my filthy hands but her girlfriend was not the the neatest person and so my brother was on the floor playing with his cars and when he got up his knees were just dirty and his hands were dirty and he stood up in front of my mother and her girlfriend and said your flaws are just filthy they're absolutely filthy <laughs> So we have a joke in our family, wash your filthy hands. 
So anyway, yes, I do like sometimes to use a little stays on. Sometimes I'll use a little stamp spritzer when I'm working on a project. Just in between, if I'm done with the project, of course, I just go wash my hands. But if I'm working at a crop or I'm working at my table, I will spritz my hands with some of our stamp cleaner. And even if they stay stained a little bit, I know then that I'm not going to get my smudgy prints on my beautiful artwork. So now I look looked at my cheat sheet the, of my process of elimination and I pulled open the caps of only those colors that I circled and now begins the coloring process. So I will say this part does get long. I'm going to let it go in real time. So if you don't want to watch me color and you want to just skip to the end result, um, go ahead and hit next chapter and you can pop forward. If you do um, want want to watch the coloring and it's helpful for you hang out with me and we'll do that together I do try to be conscious because I know that people don't have a lot of time and I don't want people to be um, sitting here for hours on end but if you are reduplicating something like this layout from your stash or if you're ac actually doing my stamp of the month kit and you love the process or you just want ideas of your own um, or you're going to just recreate it on your own using my free design space file that I've linked in the description, you may want to do this with me. And so now I'm picking out a flower. I may not color all of the flowers the same color, but I'll pick a good plenty that are shaped that way and I will color them with that color. And I will use this process pretty much all the way down to the end until there gets to be so many little tiny bits and then I'll kind of be a little more random at the end but the bulk of the coloring especially when I'm doing a large floral like this will will totally be um, that way I will pick them one at a time and I may speed this up just a touch not super fast I don't want Mickey Mouse fast but I might speed it up just a touch because you know my sister System. My system is I'm going to pick a color and I'm going to pick the majority of those flowers of a certain shape in that color. If there's a color that goes a little bit with my, with my theme, with my photos, with my paper, but not a lot, but just a little where I just want a tiny blip of that color, I will make sure that I will pick a flower there's not very many of for that particular color. So you might think I'm overthinking it, but it's actually a very easy system to scan it and look and go, there's just maybe three of those flowers. So I'm gonna use this really, really dark color that doesn't go with everything, but I need it to tie in and make it look like a multi uh, uh, multi-color floral. Um, it's a great way to do it. And it helps me, especially because I consider myself a novice um, marker. I don't have a lot of skill. These types of florals are great because you're barely touching your tri-blend down. You, in fact, I don't even know if you could call it coloring except for on the bigger ones because you're barely touching the tip on those little teeny bits. And so I probably could even go faster if I was doing this for myself but of course I'm on camera and I'm a little nervous I don't want to make more mistakes in front of you although sometimes these mistakes have turned into great learning lessons but yeah I don't want to start over on my coloring so so continuing continuing we're just going to continue so I do, um, I am kind of excited about doing this theme when my, my, um, well, my grandmother passed when I was very, very young and my mother was very, very young. In fact, I don't remember her. Um, right here, I'm talking a little bit about the true blue, how dark that, tr that true blue is, um, and that I don't want to pick too many for that dark dark color i'm going to pick a smaller floral for that dark and same with the more gray color i do want the more gray color um, in there but not too many so anyway my grandmother passed and she had passed along some 
pajamas that she got from Japan. And then there was a photo of my, um, my grandmother in them, and then my mother in them, and then my mother took a photo with me in them, and then I took a photo with my daughter in them. And I did pass them along to my daughter to take pictures of my granddaughters in them. And it's just a probably a quirky thing that people don't do anymore. But I saved a few of my daughter's clothes um, and a few of my son's clothes. Um, and they, um, I kept just like the very special outfits, a few of them. And I knew that once they took pictures of their children in them, that they would probably pass them along to Goodwill or something like that. But I really appreciated if the children got to wear them a little. Unfortunately, the styles had have changed so much. And um, of course, they've gotten tattered and things like that. But certain special things like that, I love to do layout of those types of things. Now, the little yellow jacket isn't an heirloom. It was purchased with the first granddaughter in that family, but my daughter has three daughters, and so the oldest is nine all the way down to the youngest, who is four. And so um, at the time of this photo, um, this little one was obviously not very old. And so um, I have loved scrapping them, but what I didn't do is I didn't scrap them together. I scrapped like one layout of Hattie Elaine with the yellow jacket and one layout of Ramsey Kate with the yellow jacket and one layout of Avery Jean with the jacket. And I think it would be great to do a culminating layout, even though it isn't um, in sequence in terms of the time frame. They would be all be different time frames. I think it would be a cool layout to do that. Sometimes I like to come up with those things. And I would love to hear from all of you out there, whether you're mothers or grandmothers, um, do you scrap all of your children? Do you scrap all of your grandchildren? So I did scrap the majority of my children until my children became adults. And then I passed that along to them. Um, and some of them do well with it and some of them don't. But then I also do hit and miss on them as their adult themes. I do, um, um, I do like some things as gifts. So certain special events, I will create like a little album or I won't even create an album. I'll just create certain pages for their albums. And um, then as far as my grandchildren, um, my, you know, my goal for my grandchildren was to scrap those things in which we are involved in. So when I have my grandchildren or am at my grandchildren's events or houses, I scrap those photos because I'm scrapping them in our regular album. Um, and then for the photos that they give me, um, that my children give me of the grandchildren of different events that I am not at, I pick and choose. Like if I have the perfect paper or if I'm in love with the photo or if I love the story behind it, then I will go ahead and I will scrap it. So now I believe I'm doing the more gray tone and I'm talking a little bit about just doing a tiny bit. So it does, it is needed in this series to go and you'll see that in the Cape Cod papers. You'll see a whole bunch of different shades of bluish grays and and then brighter blues. Um, and so I'm just kind of being careful to do a little bit and then um, to come back in. Um, of course, when you're doing floral clusters like this or floral stamps like this, you'll go back and you'll get more flowers knocked out and then you'll be like, oh, I missed a pointy one with this color. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this does take time, y'all. So if you want to move forward in the chapters, you go right ahead. I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to get it finished. And then we're going to get to some more great fun. And all of this background work is going to pay off. <laughs> 
by doing a lot of these little details, it's totally going to pay off. So not all of our stamp of the months require coloring. Of course, we have stamps of the month that are just word stamps, and we have stamps of the month that don't require any coloring at all. Um, another great technique is to color on the back or on the fronts of your cardstocks, you know, you can do a wash with ink. You could have done on these wings, you could have done a rub of maybe three or four colors in a row and then stamped over the top of those colors and then fussy cut out so that the colors were just naturally underneath the stamping. It would look a little more watercolory because your edges wouldn't be completely clear, but it is a total trend right now to not have perfect coloring, to kind of have a wash over the top or a blotch over the top of the images that is less than perfect. And so it sort of depends on the look that you like. So now I'm moving to the orange family and I'm using my little process of elimination sheet and I've pulled the caps off of only those colors that I circled on my elimination sheet. So now it doesn't really matter what I go with. I do believe I want one color though for all of the flower centers. I think that's what I'm doing now is I'm doing all of the flower centers. Hopefully you've pulled out your stamp of the month and you're just doing it with me. So it's not like watching paint dry. It's like just doing it right along with me and having fun with me. I have been blown away by, well, YouTube. I'm new to YouTube. I started doing YouTube a couple months ago um, and really getting a little more out there and sharing. And I can see the satisfaction that people get from doing it. There is a teacher inside of me because I am a speech pathologist and I do teach. Um, I've done from birth to death, basically from uh, pediatrics to geriatrics and everything in between. This is my 36 sixth year as a speech pathologist, but I I love pediatrics and infants and toddlers. I um I really gravitate and that's probably why I don't have a very big vocabulary because I've been talking to toddlers for 37 years. So if I say I need to take a break and go potty, that is why. But um I have found that um and I completely forgot my point, but I found that there is an, oh, there's an element of teaching in me that I do, I have been really enjoying it. I did start my YouTube channel, gosh, I want to say it's been a year or maybe even two ago, and I have hundreds upon hundreds of videos, but they're all private or unlisted because I used my YouTube as a tool for my customers. So I have a private customer group called Snips by Kelly. So if you don't have a maker out there and you're looking for a maker or a place to be inspired, um, definitely request access on Facebook. My group is called Snips by Kelly and you can request access and it's a group of about 150 of us and we're a very intimate, fun group of ladies. Ladies. I'm sure a lot of you are out there watching. And so if you are, give a shout. But I'm in love with all of them. They are generous and they are kind and they are creative. And we do things every single week where they share their artwork because I get sick of myself. I get sick of hearing myself. I get sick of talking about my artwork. And I love to actually be very inspired by them and some of the things that they are able to do. They're very talented. And um, so, hey, if you are from my Snips by Kelly group and you're out there watching, give a shout out in the comments and, um, and say hey to everybody out in YouTube land. But I've been enjoying my YouTube. I decided to be more public and really get out there and share a little bit more about my craft and my programs and my workshops and techniques. And I do love cricket. So I'd get 
really energetic when I share Cricut videos. In fact, I did link um, the Cricut video for um, how to create the um, um, not overlays but stencils on the Cricut into this video so you can check that out but I love teaching Cricut um, and I mostly love teaching Cricut on how it relates to scrapbooking um, because I think that adding Cricut elements are just as fun as adding stickers and die cuts and bling and stamping. And I'm one of those people, I love all of the above. I think there's a place for all of it. And I think that it's so pleasing to your eye to have that texture and have um, a combination on a layout of die cuts, of stickers, of, um, of bling, of stamping, of inking, of uh, Cricut cuts and it's just so fun to use a tiny bit of all of it and you become so versed in it some people are so afraid of the Cricut just like I was afraid of doing this of this markering you know I I always said I'm a bad markerer and I used to say that about math as well and kind of give myself this pre-deceiving preconceived notion of you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. If you say you're bad at something, you probably are going to be bad at something. But if you say that you, um, but if you say that I'm a learner, um, which is what I always do, I say I'm a lifelong learner. And from the beginning to where I am now, I have actually grown a lot in my tri blending. Um, this project, of course, doesn't show it so much because, I mean, and actually it does, because in the beginning I had no idea how to pick a marker. I didn't even know how to pick patterns or papers based on photos. Um, and so I think watching Close to My Heart, Close to My Heart is a Let Me Teach You Out company. And they have free classes. So hop on over to the Close to My Heart official Facebook page. Another place to go is the Close to My Heart blog. I'll link link both of those in the description. The Close to My Heart official Facebook page and the Close to My Heart blog. I have probably learned more from Close to My Heart than any other place in my lifetime. Every single video I watch that they do, which is typically free on their Close to My Heart Facebook page. Yes, you can buy materials and supplies to create with them. So yes, there's a cost if you want to do exactly what they're doing, but there is no cost to go watch. Put this, put those videos on just like you do this video that you're watching now and wash your dishes or, you know, sit it in the windowsill and wash your dishes or when you're crafting, put one on in the background. You will learn so much. I love, love, love the ladies from Close to My Heart and they've helped me so much in my coloring as far as shadowing and blending and thinking about the way the light hits something. Um, now, I haven't really gotten so great at any of that or at texture coloring but my coloring from the beginning when I started to now has come light years and I also actually enjoy it now I enjoy it so much more so I promise we're getting there we are so close and maybe you've already clicked to the next chapter and you're not watching this part but if you are hanging with me during this part shout me out in the comments and tell me if you did I'm I'll be impressed with you number one and number two to, I'd like to hear why you did and what helped you because it does help me in my teaching to help know what people don't know and what they would like to know and sometimes there are people things that people want to know that I actually want to know too. And it is, inspires me to be a learner and to go out and find those answers and practice and then come back to all of my people and share what I learned. And my Paper Crafters and Snips by Kelly are really wonderful about sharing tips and tricks that they've learned. And if I do a video and they know an easier way, they will teach me. And I love that. So if you know easier ways um, or you've learned any good trips share with all of us in the comments so that 
we learn right along with each other. So we are getting super close. We are doing it. And this coloring is really what has made the video so long, but I feel like it is necessary from time to time, especially in a project like this, where the artist of these stamps purposely does this so that you can coordinate with anything. What I do love about these um, stamp sets that are rich with these florals is that you choose no matter what colors in fact your photos when you recreate this layout may be completely different than my colors and the beauty of it is you can pick a whole different set of markers you can completely pick the markers that go with your photos and what you have chosen and so i do love that these stamp sets are personalizable i'm not sure if personalizable is a word but it's going to be one now because i just said it um but i love that about these so close to my heart will try out different artists and so you will see a certain style that you can sort of recognize that artist so a couple of the stamp sets that we've had that were from this same artist we had um it was a little forest animal set that had like a hedgehog what else did it have uh, several different animals in it that had these florals in it what else did we have there were three or four that we've had that these had these images with the florals embedded and it's very distinct so you'll be able to tell this artist and they may try out like they have their own studio artists that have their style and then they might try out guest designers for some of their stamps as well and so when you go through our catalogs you can sort of pick out from month to month in the stamp of the month that they might be rotating through some of those guest artists. And I kind of like making a game of kind of trying to figure out the artist's style and sort of getting into the head of what that artist was trying to accomplish aside from making aesthetically pleasing stamps. But this artist definitely was very smart in that he or she knows that these are personalizable according to your photos and what you're creating and I do love that about these and we are almost there we are on the green leaves oh my gosh yay 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 now we're gonna get to the heart and the meat of this project and get it culminating so you might be picking back up with me if you um, clicked on chapters and you skipped the coloring so you might be picking back up with me here in a few minutes and so welcome back if you are getting super super close I'm gonna need a drink of water I talk so much through that that is a trick to um, to share enough uh, to be helpful in these videos and to sort of feel like you're talking like I'm talking to all of you instead of to myself although I do have to admit and my friends who are out there watching know I do talk to myself um, and I think it didn't really start to be as much talking to myself until I started paper crafting in my studio by myself. I really, really, really talk to myself and ask myself questions and then I answer them. <laughs> So yay, I love it. It's beautiful. It goes so well. It's going to be so gorgeous. So now we are using our microtip scissors. We are going to rotate the paper more than the scissors and let rotating the paper do more of the work. Always when you're fussy cutting images, and this is an easy image to cut out. I love that it just has a few little hills and valleys, but for the most part, they're super easy to go around. But um, we are going to leave a tiny little bit of a white lip around it so that it looks like a thin cut. If you've been around with Close to My Heart, that's not a new, tri a new tip. That's a tip that they taught me to leave that little edge. And when you're trying to fussy cut so close to an image, number one, it doesn't look natural and it doesn't look as clean. It sounds crazy that leaving a white edge would make it look cleaner, but it really, really does. It makes everything look uniform. It makes it so that you don't have to be as perfect. Um, and I love doing that. It's a great technique. And these microtip scissors, I always, um, I do have 
both types of our scissors, but I will probably admit that these are my go-to scissors 99% of the time. These are so sharp. They have a wonderful craw, a wonderful point. They are um, uh, non-stick. And I think in this video a little later, I actually show you how I cut foam tape with it, longer strips of foam tape with it without it sticking to my scissors. And I think that is an absolute must have when you're a scrapbooker and you're working with adhesive as much as I do. So yay, it's so darling. I think maybe a little shimmer brush or maybe a little bling on those when we get to using those later. So I didn't put you through cutting out the B. I figured that was enough torture for one day. So here we go. I did uh, cut out a few additional Cricut pieces that are included in my free design space file. This jar, and I'm gonna link the video. I taught a tutorial on how to do some slicing and create shakers out of lots of other shapes, including this mason jar. And we made a mason jar shaker. And so I've linked that in the description and it should be showing up up on top there. And you can click on that and save that video or look at that video if you want to. But I thought it would be cute to make a honey jar. And I made a little top. Now, that pattern paper that would be way too expensive for me to use the photo map for, I could actually make 75 jar tops without that much expense. I could probably get by uh, with two or three, uh, maybe more sheets of that paper instead of 25 <laughs> 25 packages of them if I was going to use a photo mat because it's a pretty tiny piece at the top of the jar. In fact, I do believe later in the video I make this jar even smaller. So that's why I think I only end up needing to use a couple sheets instead of four sheets because of the way the layout turned out. Now, I do have a basket of these types of things because I make 75 Stamp of the Month kits every month. These little inserts, these, these scallop circles came out of our stitched circle frame. So one month, the Stamp of the Month kit was slimline circle cards. I have some leftover tags, leftover strips. And so I was kind of in the back of my mind just wanting to remind myself in case I want to journal on a tag or in case I want to use any of those things in my layouts. I love to pull those out. And in the rare, e the rare event, or I shouldn't say rare, it happens quite a bit, that I'm able to find pieces out of that that I have hundreds of, and I can actually use them in 75 kits. It's like score. I love it. So I don't believe I end up actually using any pieces in this layout. So I'm pulling back in the inspiration inspired by the featured artwork for Cape Cod and the featured artwork for Cozy Up. And they always have a featured artwork uh, layout or cards for each collection. And so you can always check those out. So now I'm pulling back in the pattern papers and making those decisions. Because they use that beachy wood grain in that, I would kind of like to pull something similar to that. I don't know if I'll use it how they used it, but um, that uh, crisscross is bulk. So that's more economical for me to use, but it's awful dark. The wood grain is, I do love the wood grain, but that I get two sheets of that in every paper pack that uh, every Cape Cod paper pack, excuse me, a smaller strip of the yellow and the orange wouldn't hurt because I get two pieces of that in the cozy up. I can't see anything that the wine burgundy color goes with. I'm going to think about those. I'm kind of thinking about the dark crisscross or the wood green from Cape Cod. But in the meantime, I know that I want to mount this whether I'm using Cozy Up or whether I'm using the inspiration from Cape Cod. I want it on sapphire because of Avery Jean's sapphire ribbon in her hair and her sapphire shirt. So now I'm kind of hoping that the darker brown will work because I have more of that. 
um, and it's more cost effective. But I'm not thinking that it's going to work with everything. I'm thinking that I end up going with the lighter color. I do think that I can incorporate the Cape Cod stripe. Uh, because of the blues and it has some tan in it as well. It's perfect beach paper because it has that boardwalky feel and the linen feel. Um, and I do want to offset them. I want to have that Cape Cod paper a little bit lower than the, the stamped photo mat on the left. I am doing a switcheroo, which I do a lot, and I am going to go, I believe, with the Cape Cod paper. <laughs> it won. So I would like to use the dark, but I will have to probably reserve that for fall, I think. It's pretty rich. It's pretty dark. Had my photo had a little bit more browns in it, I think it would have been fantastic. I do think it goes with the Cape Cod just fine. Um, I did create this scallop border. I don't know where I'm going to use it, but I think I'd like to use it somewhere. I keep pulling in that sapphire. It must be my favorite. So get ready when I'm doing my Cape Cod um, scrapbooking workshop. Um, I have a feeling I'll be using a lot of that Cape Cod sapphire. My eye just draws to it. I don't know what it is. And I feel like it goes with a lot that you can really get by with that. I'm thinking I'm gonna add a couple strips. I'll probably cut them off or tear them off. Add some something to sort of anchor things down here and have some sort of a little linear, uh, a line linear feel so we can decorate out a little more toward the right. I may put this little scallop strip. I love grabbing bits, Cricut bits, especially on a layout like this with the stamp of the month. Because the stamp of the month, we're gonna get all of our bits from the stamp or other places. So I can't open up a package of like say bling or like um, say die cuts where there's only a certain number of die cuts or I can't actually use stickers from the sticker sheet when I'm doing my stamp of the month bonus kit because I would have to have 75 of the same sticker. So I have to get creative and that's one of the reasons I love the stamps of the month that um that have lots of little bits in them because I can stamp those little bits on tags, on strips, on banners, on uh, colored cardstock, on pattern paper, and I can create lots of extra bits and embellishments, almost like ephemera. You know, you're just finding lots of little bits. So now I'm going to trim this honeycomb piece. This is another famous thing that I love to do. I love to create Cricut cuts and cut them in bits and use some of them on some pages and some of them on other pages. And I will even in my workshops cut Cricut pieces, stickers, die cuts in multiple pieces and use them on different layouts within the workshop as well. One of the things that doing that does is it ties layouts together in a theme throughout the workshop. Now, I don't always do one workshop where every single page has the same theme. I might do a couple pages that have to do with boy and a couple pages that have to do with girl and a couple pages that would be generic family. But then there are also those workshops that I carry a theme all the way through. But even if the theme of the pages isn't the same, the theme of the bits can be the same. So I can pull hexagons in multiple layouts um, if that is the theme. So now I'm playing with the bits. I'm kind of trying to decide if maybe I want to make a companion layout um, and maybe I want to use the hive on uh, the left page and the bee on the right or the bee on the left page and the hive on the right but I have this jar and I am I swoon for mason jars but I make jelly and I make jam and I love decorating the top of the jelly jars and I also love the opportunity to make um, this into a shaker um, and again I'm a broken record but I did make a video on that that's linked in the description but a shaker element on a page is adorable and it just adds a wow factor to a page now if I were to make a shaker element 
on this stamp of the month kit, I would probably keep this to a single page layout because a shaker element adds quite a bit of an expense and I do end up making the shaker smaller. And you'll see that later on here in the video, we're getting closer toward the end. Um, and I make it smaller because I want some added bits to fit. I want to be able to stamp a sentiment inside the, inside the shaker, add a little bit of inking and make it look like honey, and then add some little bits to make it look like it's flowing in the jar. So if I add that shaker element, I'm going to have to add acetate window, right and then I'll add more Cricut cuts and if I'm adding acetate window to a kit that means I have to have one acetate window for every kit and there's six acetate windows that would fit this jar in a package so six into 75 means that I would have to have roughly about let's see six six three two probably 12 packages of shakers or something that would be a little more economical is I can use our sheets of acetate and I can cut them to size, which would be probably more economical. So I do believe I use a circle shaker from our circle shaker window acetate and foam um, because it just fits really, really well. But either one, and if you're grabbing acetate and foam from your stash because you've purchased a package and you only needed a couple out of the package and you have four or five left or three left in the package that's perfect okay so I'm playing around and I did decide to do some tearing and distressing on the top of the wood grain paper and I'm just kind of deciding on position I did add those Cricut um, um, uh, honeycombs to um, the corner and I'll probably add some more of those in different spots as well. Now I wanna place the striped Cape Cod paper. So I do believe I used about an inch and a half by six of the wood grain Cape Cod. I believe I used four by eight, um, and, I'm, and then I think I cut it down to seven of the striped Cape Cod. I believe I used about three quarters of a strip of the um, season mix-ins. Oh, I keep calling that Cape Cod. I think that's, now I'm second guessing myself. Is that Cape Cod? I think that's a season mix-in. That's a season mix-in. That's our brand new July and August season mix-in. So that is about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to guess since the white is 11, that that strip is probably about 10 and a half. You could go a little uh, longer on that or a little shorter on that. And then again, the um, honey butter season mix-in strip here is a half inch. And I'm a little longer so I'm thinking I'm probably 10 10.75 probably 10 and three quarters on that one um, you have to remind me holler at me if I don't give you dimensions the background white is 11 by 11 right now I have an odd size photo in place but you're gonna see that as usual I run into a problem and I have to change my photo size now one thing that I love and I'm gonna give a shout out to a couple um, YouTube influencers that are also close to my heart makers. One is Erin Jacobson and one is Jayma Mommy. And those two ladies are fan fantastic on YouTube. They are amazing creators. They are amazing makers and they are like more than amazing um, YouTubers. And they both have super successful YouTube channels. So you can check them out. I'll link them in the description. But both ladies have done phenomenal videos on the kind of printer that I have. And it is an Epson Picture Mate 400. And I could not do a better video so anytime I'm talking about my Epson picture meet, I will send people on over to either Erin or Jema's um, channels or both of those ladies because they each have a little bit of a different take on the same printer. And I believe they both use different 
apps for their printers. And I think I use a different app than both of them. Um, and mine is called ah, Perfect Picture, Picture Perfect, Picture Mate, Picture... <laughs> I will list it in the description of the app that I use. And one of the reasons I use a different app than them is I'm basic. I love to just, with my fingers, stretch my photos to, you know, two by two, three by three, four by four, um, four by six, five by seven, um, and odd sizes. Sometimes I like to use a three by five. Sometimes I like to use something skinnier and longer depending on my layout. So I like to be able to take my fingers and stretch my picture on my phone to the size that I want it to be. And that's why I use the app that I use. And I promise I will look that up. So back to the layout. Boy, I'm Chatty Kathy today. Chatty Kelly. So now I um, am getting this all together. I'm loving it. I'm adding the mason jar. I'm going to do some stamping on the mason jar. I love the bead down below. Um, I'm contemplating adding some more of the Cricut elements like the honeycomb, but look what happens. I want my wood grain piece to line up with the top, but when I do, it leaves a gap. So that is no emergency. This happens all the time. I can try to fill it with the honeycomb. I can try to fill it with a tag and do some journaling. I can see if the tag will go up there and do some journaling. If I could use up 75 of my tags, I'd be super happy. I don't have 75, but I do have a lot uh, from left. I can't remember what happened. I think it was my brother was helping me make Cricut cuts. My brother has had a sticker making company making like um, decals, um, t-shirts, bumper stickers. And so he's really good with the cricket and he helps me a lot. Uh, when he, um, he had a couple major health crises and some accidents and is unable to do his normal job, which is physical labor. And, um, so he has been helping me do cricket cutting a lot. And, um, anyway, I think what happened is he had the wrong color loaded or something happened and I had ended up with a bunch of white tags, but never fear. You'll see them on lots of future layouts <laughs> to come. I decided to add that orange in. Now, the reason I did, it has some kind of like, I don't want to say pumpkin-y words, but fall words on it, but the orange in my jacket and adding another color. I have a lot of yellow. I have um, quite a bit of blue now. I have some browns, but I didn't really have anything to offset the orange except the B. And I love using that orange across from the B. So now you can see that I made that photo way larger. I put it in my picture, picture, um, mate and printed a five by seven. I did have to re-stamp my, my, my blue um, sapphire frame. But now that I did a larger sapphire frame, guess what? I get to use less pattern paper and um, I'm able to use two little pieces of the striped pattern paper. It still shows plenty. It still does what I need it to do in the layout, but I've made it even more economical by using a smaller piece of the pattern paper. And now by making that mason jar smaller and making that photo smaller, it looks a little better to me next to the hive. It seemed like the mason jar was ginormous compared to the hive and so now I kind of like the cuteness of the little teeny tiny and looking at my stamps um, I don't think too many stamps are going to fit in there but I do think there's one in the stamp of the month that's going to fit so I'm going to come in here with my honey butter and make a lovely honey tone and I'm going to make it look like honey that's tilted a little bit that is partially filling the jar which is a very common thing to do you see cute little cards like like this all the time. In fact, it's sparking a few card ideas for me. I am first and foremost a memory keeper and a scrapbooker, um, but I have become, since my time with Close to My Heart, more and more of a card maker. I don't consider myself a card maker,
maker. I consider myself a card maker by default, um, and I definitely do make lots of cards for my Stamp of the Month kits to help satisfy some of my card makers because they get a lot of scrapbook from me. So if a lot of months they get a wonderful like five card kit with the Stamp of the Month, it keeps them happy that they're doing a little bit of both. And then I use my Stamp of the Month Master Cards in my thank yous when I'm thanking a customer, then I actually have some cards to send. <laughs> Uh, but I'm the worst card sender. Oh my gosh. I Even when I have cards, I'm so behind and I feel so bad. Um, so, okay. I think the high is going to work and I've sort of problem solved and decided that I want the high to be in Sapphire. So, of course, I stamped it on scrap over there and then I'm going to scrap it or scrap it, stamp it on the mason jar. But I forgot to put my nice soft cushiony versa mat behind it you don't want to do that because you'll end up with crappy stamping excuse my language um, and you don't want to have to stamp it over and re-ink that little mason jar so when I'm stamping on something that I don't have a lot of or that I can't flip over to the back although I think you could flip this mason jar over to the back and it would be fine. Um, I'm loving that because I think about um, Avery Jean saying, hi everyone, here I am. I'm looking so cute in my little yellow jacket and it's going to be around for generations to come. And so now I'm using a little liquid Tombow on the back of the mason jar because this is a handmade shaker um, by the Cricut. It's not a thin cut or something that was had foam that was made for it. Now there's a filmy side on the circle acetate, on all of our acetate, even if it's the rectangle acetate um, or if it's the acetate that comes in the sheets. But when you let that glue dry, you'll have a little lip where this is where another reason, another of a thousand reasons I love my nonstick micro tip scissors, I can work those scissors right in between the acetate after it has dried and it's pretty secure. I can work my scissors in between the acetate and the outer shaker so easy. So People think, oh, I don't want to make a shaker because I have to fussy cut all the way around whatever I'm creating. You do not. Stick those scissors in between the space and it will just come out like nobody's business. Now, I have some bitty beads. They are retired, um, but I have a lot of them. And then I probably, sometimes in my Stamp of the Month kits, everyone gets a little something different. So um, when I'm trying to come up, if I don't have have enough. If it's something I can buy enough of, I buy enough of it. If it's retired, I divvy out as much of it as I can and then I use something else that's equally as cute and then it's a surprise in the kit. So I think gold sequins would be really loose. Gold loose sequins would be really cute in this. We have other colors of bitty beads. Um, we have other colors. We have like clear gems that are super cute and I have a lot of them um, and so I could use those. So what what you saw me do is take those nonstick micro tip scissors and cut skinny tape even skinnier. So on when my mason jar was the larger size, our skinny foam tape fit perfectly. But because I made the size smaller, the area that I have to pop up with foam tape is a little skinnier, but I never worry about that. Um, the back side of your shaker doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, mine are usually pretty scary looking but it doesn't matter as long as you have coverage, as long as that coverage doesn't show through, meaning as long as your foam tape doesn't show through on your acetate window, and as long as it is covered all the way so the beads or the sequins or whatever you have in there won't leak out, um, it does not matter. And so those non-stip scissors are what I use every single time I make homemade shakers because I can cut that foam tape with those without it sticking and also other adhesives wipe right off of your non-stick micro tip scissors and they don't get gummed up um, like a regular scissors. So another thing that I will probably be buried with. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm gonna have to put that in fact when I get done with the video I'm gonna have to put that in my will and say in addition to burying me with my all-purpose mat and my versa mat bury me with my non-stick micro tip scissors you can put them in my pocket okay so I'm just arranging and of course these kind of are loose so they kind of get all over which is okay because you can just scoop them right back up I use our circle craft jars for all of my bling because they're visible I can I put them in a drawer sideways uh, so that they are sideways up and so they all fit in a row and I can't remember how many fit in a slider file drawer but it's perfect. I pull the whole tray out whenever I'm doing a project and I can see every bead and every sequin right through the jar and I don't even bother with labels because I can see them. Um, you could label them if you're a label person but I don't bother because I can see through them and we used to have square ones and then now we have round ones and I guess if they ever go to something else I would have to do something else but yay I'm loving it are you loving it it's cute I have you know what this looks nothing like either one <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. This looks like neither one of those cover um, feature layouts. It has similarities though. It does. And so <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to say. Play. Grab a couple pieces of inspiration. Get started. And based on your photos, based on your bits, based on your colors, you're going to end up going in a different direction. So now I have a 0.10 um, gel pen, white jelly roll pen. I'm using my T-square ruler because it's extra long and I can go um, and I can do a quarter of an inch all the way around with my white jelly roll pen just to make a little more of a decoration. If this was my personal page, I would have gutted that sapphire season mix-ins and then I would have used the interior of the gutted frame for all the little bits and then I would have used that outside. So if you're out there and you're going to reduplicate this layout, grab a pack of season mix-ins and you can use that gorgeous sapphire pattern that's been driving me crazy that I can't use on my stamp of the month kit that much because I don't have enough of it. And so now you can see that I sort of made this visual triangle, added some bling. I have just some leftover gold, um, gold uh, sequins, yes, gold glitter gems, gold jitter, glitter gems, and now I'm grabbing my clear shimmer brush. I just feel like the flowers on the honeycomb are deserving of a little shimmer brush, and that's something that I, I would venture to guess that 99% of my customers already have, so they don't have to buy something more to add shimmer brush to that, um, and I would maybe add some little teeny gold or um, or bitty sparkles to some of those. If this was my personal layout, I can't um, add a ton of bling to every um, stamp of the month kit. I add do add bling to every one, but if I add three bling, I have to multiply three bling by 75. So I try to be conscientious of that and I try to be as generous as I can without going too crazy and having to count out bling. So there is my journaling. I decided to add journal strips on the bottom and I love it. I hope you love it too. I hope you've had a blast. I hope you love a little bit of scrapbooking with your Cricut and you'll check out the other videos. Hit subscribe and like and follow and shoot me a comment um, and I'd love for you to hang out with me again. Happy scrapping everyone. Bye-bye.